So, welcome. We are in the Lion's Gate. And Lion's Gate, I'll just give you a really quick definition of Lion's Gate. So, Lion's Gate often is associated with the astrology time frame of the time of Leo. So, July 23rd to August um, August 23rd or 21st, whatever those dates are. But for me, Lion's Gate is more tied to the constellation and Orion and the star systems and what and how we interact with the star systems. And so the Lion's Gate has to do with the return or when we can see the constellation Orion and the star system series in the Orion's belt. And this is the time of year that the sun interacts with Ceres. And we it opens up an, a natural portal here to Earth, which showers us with the rays of lion's energy, which is passion and love and creativity, and also some of the not so good things that we associate with the lion, the, you know, sometimes the roaring or uh, the domination, that type of thing. So we get both and just being aware of that energy that's, that's coming in, we can, we can balance it a little bit. So that's what the lion's gate is. But I really wanted to talk about, you know, how do we navigate the theme this month at Lake Harriet is how do we navigate what's happening right now? Because beyond just the lion's gate, which is actually the this, this showering of energy that we're receiving, we're not really sending, we're receiving. How do we navigate this energy between now and the rest of the year going into 2021? Because we're in it for the long haul. This is not a quick, easy, you know, we can talk about, I can talk about astrology and the roller coaster peaks and the valleys that we feel and when we're going to feel the pressure and when we get to rest a little bit. But we are on a roller coaster. We always have been. We'll always be on a roller coaster. So how do you navigate? And keeping in mind that this is the year when I really say it's like the roads have been ripped away. Okay? And you're not sure where you want to go, right? And your GPS isn't working. <laughs> so you have all of those things happening. And you can't even get out for a pleasure drive, right? Because... We're supposed to be hunkering down or the roads are not there. And so the universe is putting all these, these blocks in, in our way. And any one of these things could be incredibly difficult, but we're dealing with all of them right now. And in the end or in the beginning, all we want to do is our soul wants to go home. Okay. So think about it. The roads are being ripped up. Your GPS isn't working because we're all getting recalibrated with new directions and new roadways and new pathways. The, um, you don't know where you're going yet. Some of you are still looking for that home on your physical sense, but the soul just wants to come home or to go home. So what does that mean? And the soul is, is based on love and peace and calm. So many of you have maybe practiced the law of manifestation over the years. You might have storyboards, you might have mantras that you say, you might have regular meditations that you're setting those intents out to the universe. But how many of you realize that you've been manifesting or you've been contributing to this energy right now? And I'm just gonna go through a list of maybe, how many of you have said in the past, I wish I could work from home? I wish I didn't have to run all the time. I wish I had more time. I wish I could sleep in. I wish I had a different job. I wish I could just focus on me. I wish I could just be by myself for once. I wish everyone would just slow down. I wish there wasn't so much traffic. I wish I could just go to work in my PJs. Well, <laughs> any of those resonate with you? That, you know, we're constantly sending those wishes out to the universe. And so when we talk about purposeful navigation, it's really being aware of what we're wishing for right now. So some of the wishes that I send out is I wish for more consciousness. I wish for more global peace. I wish for more access to my spiritual gifts and to the teachers of the universe. 
And I wish that my angels and guides are ever present for all of us, not just me. And even some of those subtle things that we've said in the past, I wish I were done. I wish I were done with this roadblock or I wish I were done with the things that hold me back. Well, that's exactly what we're experiencing right now is we're experiencing on a global standpoint, as well as an individual, those things that have held us back. And we're not liking it because those are the hidden things that have held us back. And we've been asking for this freedom. We've been wanting this, asking the universe to deliver this because the soul is just wanting to go home to that place of, of peace. But some of us don't feel ready for it, right? So when we function from that heart-centered place, let's talk about that a little bit. Heart-centered place is ruled by peace. It's more collaborative. It's pristine happiness and joy. That's what we're all wishing for. True? But when we're searching for home, we also have to work. It's like, you know, I, I know I've got some folks that are not in Minnesota here, but in Minnesota, when we have snow in the winter, you have to shovel the driveway. You got to shovel to get to the front door. And that's kind of what the universe is saying is sometimes you just got to shovel your way through these things to get home. The soul is always pulling us. And so one of the, the key things to navigate this time is to, is to be in that place of self-care because the soul always knows what it needs. Even if the soul is pulling you away from a relationship, pulling you away from a job, pulling you away from a home that you thought you loved or that you love. It's the soul knows what, what you need, okay? And so in this lion energy right now in August, you know, think about the lion roaring and that passion. Those are the things that are gonna come up for us. The creativity, the passion, the deep love. But it's going to dig up the things that are stress-related, anxiety, maybe fatigue, overwhelm, because those things are earthly things. They're not really soul things, they're earthly things. So you've got this extreme amount of light and energy coming in through the lion's gate, the galactic forces that are beyond us, and I'm talking about angels, guides, loved ones, the astral beings are helping, they're bringing in that information. It's pushing those heart-centered, those peace-ruled things. But our humanness is releasing the stress, the anxiety, the fatigue, the overwhelm. So if you're feeling those things, be open to releasing them, that it's showing you it's time to just release that, okay? And we're in this for some time. So I probably the number one question that I get asked each week when I see clients is when is this going to end? Well, we're in it for a long time. We have Pluto energy. If I have any astrologists there, people that follow the stars, I'll just remind you quick that Pluto is kind of that death and rebirth. And we're in this energy and it's an outer planet. So it affects the big structures around us, like the financial industry, education, religion, medical, legal systems, justice, even political systems, entertainment, technology. Those are the big systems, right? They're going through a big shift. And some of those are, are shutting down or shredding or being reconstructed. They need to be revamped. And those are outside of us, right? But they impact us. But this is also a year for us to take down and shred our personal systems that don't work for us. So we can look at what's happening in the world and, and say there's a lot of chaos and there's a lot of things that are external and certainly they impact us. But there's stuff happening internal too. Because we simply here are on earth. So the things that are being shredded or bubbled up through all this love energy coming in are our judgments, our belief systems, our patterns, any of those things that prevent us from going home, okay? 
And it's just like when you have a key, sorry about this. Um, just like when you have a key to a house, the universe gives us keys to access those portals or those things into the universe. And not all of us have the keys right now, and we don't like that. <laughs> we talk a lot about the fifth dimension, and the key to the fifth dimension is the heart. It is functioning and operating through the heart. And sometimes, I'll, I'll just be honest, that's hard. That's incredibly hard when there's so many things happening around that trigger us. But it's to come back to the heart because the gateway, the key to the path forward or the key to the soul is through the heart. You know, oftentimes when we meditate, we like to go out. We like to focus about going out through the third eye or the crown. It's actually through the heart. We want to we want to open up that heart and allow that in. That's the key. And so that's where our emotional attachments are getting broken up. And that's what this lion's gate, the, the codes and the keys of the universe right now are hitting us in the heart. It's tough because it wants to get in there. It, and, and I say this very lovingly because the energy that's coming in is hard, but it's very loving because it wants to break up all those emotional roadblocks, those patterns that we have on a personal as well as a collective. Okay. And in our mental bodies, that's where we filter things. We keep looking for truth, right? It's also breaking up what we believe, what we thought we knew is being shredded. And we are holding truth. Last, last fall, I started talking about Hilarion, who holds the green ray of truth, was really going to be interacting with us in 2020. And he's an ascended master, Hilarion. And, he, and he's bringing this ray of truth for us, but it's not just for our the political world or the religious world or the medical field. It's not just those external. It's shaking up our personal truths. And you might notice between like July and the rest of the year, your, what you thought you knew is really going to shift or really going to change because the, the energy is, is quite intense right now. This is the truth of the soul. So if you believe that, you know, you might have earthly beliefs that are different than your soul beliefs, this is part of that shaking up because it's all in alignment. We're coming into alignment where there is no separation. There is just that oneness. And in, these, in this time, we're getting bounced back and forth. We're being bounced between what's our personal truth, our personal belief, and what we're being shown or what we thought to be true and what's really true. And that's gonna come even more truth. I, I can't speak without, <laughs> without bringing to the point, we're in a political year, right? We have an election coming up and that is gonna bring up some deep, 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 deep beliefs and, and deep um, emotions for just everyone. It's, it's the universe is so finely timed for us to shake up everything that prevents us from being in that heart-based center. So keep in mind that in the world of energy, and we're energy, everything interacts with energy, either magnetizing or drawing to you or repelling it, pushing it away. Okay. So when you think about these rays of lights coming in, and they're coming in at a high vibration, and I'm going to associate a number to them so we can put some science to it, is Earth is at 528 hertz, and it's associated to the solar plexus. We like to think it's the heart, but it's the solar plexus. We connect. And these rays of light are coming in at 528. And so we're in between. We're in between the Earth vibration and these rays of light coming in, and it's shaking stuff up. And we get to decide if we're going to align to this vibration of 528 hertz or we're going to battle and try to stay with where we were. And the truth is, is where we were is falling away and that's making it rough for some people. If you aren't in alignment with that 528 hertz, with the earth frequency, with the love frequency, it is going to be harder 
And I'll just be honest with you. Um, and so it's a decision point for many of us to align and not just say I'm living from my heart, but actually practice that. Anytime we have these big portals, these big energy gateways that either we create or the universe creates for us, it comes with challenges. It comes with attunements. It comes with tests. It comes with validation. It doesn't just happen and everything's roses, right? We have challenges because we're shedding some things. And so in this energy right now, we're shedding. And humans, by nature, we struggle with change. You know, in, in my business name, Your Life Core, and I capitalize core, I chose that for a reason because core stands for center of resource energy. That's our heart. Okay? That's where the heart is connected. That's where the heart is connected to earth. That's where the heart allows this transport out into the other dimensions through our emotional field, our mental field, the astral plane. And these other dimensions don't allow us in unless we have practiced and we have pure heart. Okay. So if I have anybody that's here that you're frustrated because you're like, I, I can't connect. I just can't connect to the other dimensions. I want to connect so much. I can't connect connect through the heart. It's just telling you that you need to, you need to work on your heart just a little bit more. It's no different than in your personal space, in your home, you wouldn't allow just anybody in, right? You, if somebody comes up to the door and knocks on the door, if you don't know them, or let's say they're, they're carrying a blazing torch, you probably wouldn't let them in, right? We, we have these gateways. Well, the same is true with the other dimensions. When we approach the other dimensions, they don't just allow us in. We have to earn that in. We have to earn that key. And the key is, is through the heart. And the honest truth is we're not done working on that heart energy. And I, and I say that for myself too. It's like we all are working on this heart energy. Some have described this time as like the the gates of hell have opened up. And I'm, I'm just, if I were in front of you, I'd ask you if, you if you guys have heard that, like the gates of hell, like what is happening to us? And we also might hear the term that this is the dark night of the soul. Those are some terms that have been, that have been thrown out. And that actually, the, the dark night of the soul, <clears throat> excuse me, is actually a term used in the Roman Catholic um, spirituality and it describes a spiritual crisis or the journey that you go on as you um, meet up with God and it's a deviation from that and it's a crisis. I don't know that that's what I would term now as the dark night of the soul. I think that the, the darkness is getting shaken up in all of us in a way to release it so that we can come back to that heart-centered space, so that we can be more pristine, live more peacefully, more happy. So a couple things in that, and, and I'm gonna give pointers today too about how to, to navigate that, but this is, you know, right now, just surrender. Trust the process, and that's hard to do because it, it's triggering us, right? But trust the process, trust that your soul has the navigation system. Your earthly system doesn't have a road, doesn't have GPS, don't know where you're going, but your soul knows what it needs to do. The soul has the navigation process and we're supported by the universe in this. Be kind and loving towards yourself and also be kind and loving to others. It's a, it's a time that we just, we feel like there's, it's okay to lash out at people. And so just be aware of, be kind to yourself. And then it's a lot easier also to be kind to others. And give yourself permission to be where you are. I know it can be scary, particularly for those that might be in between. Maybe you lost your job or things have slowed down. You're not sure of your future. Give yourself permission to be where you are. 
And that can be tough. If you're in that space, it can be tough to think, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? And all my energy has to be focused on that. But focus also where you are and that loving energy, because that's oftentimes where clarity comes in. And most importantly, stay in touch with people that you love, people that support you. And in a time where we're asked to social distance, it's hard sometimes to get together with the people that we love. But look at all of you. You're on Zoom. <laughs> we're connecting this way. Certainly, it's not, it's not the same same as being physically in the presence of someone. But it is a way that we can use technology to energetically connect. And keep in mind, everything is energy. We still have the possibility to connect this way. And then those self-care practices, whether it's praying, whether it's meditation, whether it's dance. And if you're feeling disconnected, you know, that's an, another point that, that's been asked very often is it's really a, a false belief that we're cut off. We might be feeling the thread or the tube or the, the ray of energy is diminished. We're not cut off. And so in meditation to focus on tapping into that or accessing that. So in this lion's gateway, let's talk a little bit about the energy that's coming in because it is all about love. And it's magically placed between the full moon that we had on August 4th, which let us kind of shed some stuff that had been building all summer long, and the new moon that is going to be on August 18th. And the new moon allows us to establish something new. And anytime we go into a portal like this and we have a new moon, the universe is going to really shake us up leading up to that. So just be aware of that. Today's, you know, the ninth. Be aware of that. Anytime we have a, a pivotal, you know, I'm talking about the equinoxes, the eclipses, anytime the, the universe prepares for that, it um, shakes us up in order to prepare and in order to push some of you through that portal. Okay, and the lion's gate happens every year in August. And so those that might miss the energy opportunity this year are going to get an opportunity next year. Those that maybe missed it last year are getting an opportunity this year. So it happens every, every year. And this is where the cosmic teachings are coming to us. And when I say cosmic teachings, if you believe that there are others out there or around you that are smarter than you, and I do, I believe my teachers are out there, they're smarter than me, my job is just to bring their message to you, but the cosmic teachers are coming to all of us right now, and they're delivering messages. And again, that, those emotional blockages, those roadblocks that we have are going to prevent the messages from from moving in those teachings are here to help us and their teachings on a collective standpoint as well as an individual okay and I've noticed a lot on Facebook they're asking me to just talk I've noticed a lot on social media I'm not going to pick on Facebook um on social media you know we're all teachers in some way. We have this need to share our opinion or to try to teach others. But this is a time for personal awakening, personal awareness. And so if you find you're getting frustrated because nobody's listening, then go inside and listen to yourself or come, come back to center, come back to your soul, because everybody's on an individual path. The individual path has to be recognized before we can move into a collective path. The individual path has to be realized before we can move into a collective path. So for spending all that information outward, have you done the work inward first? And in the month of August, let's talk about eight. I love the number eight. You know, if you turn it sideways, it's the infinity sign, right? And I love doing a meditation where, you know, if you start with the, the tip of the eight at the heart and then you circle out, it's the release and then it's the coming back and the welcoming of the energy from the universe. So we can do that infinity, acknowledging that we are energetic beings and we're always releasing and we're always receiving. But the meaning, if we look at numerology for a little bit, the meaning of number eight is harmony and peace and balance. And right now, probably many of you aren't feeling those things. 
right? You're feeling the desire to get back into harmony. Eight is also a sign or it gives you that loop that gives you decision points along the way. And that's where we are right now is we're in the month that's giving us the option or giving us the decision points. And because of this infinity loop, we can stay in a loop that is destructive to us or we can change the loop. Again, there's, there's pivotal points. If you use the loop when it comes to touch your heart or when it meets in the center or when it goes out into the universe, there's decision points along that way. And for many of us, the road ahead just simply doesn't feel clear, right? Because we like clarity. We like sameness. We like clarity. And eight is also an achievement number. And it's a masculine number. So it's about doing things, right? And the sun rays and the rays of Sirius, Sirius are masculine energy. So it's pushing us to do things, but the doing that we get to do right now is to navigate the heart. And when we look at number eight, let's look at, you know, the strengths of number eight. That's about ambition. It's the lion is roaring. It's karmic things. And boy, are we cleaning up karmic, karmic debt, karmic energy. We're working on ancestral wounds. I, I'm, even today, Chiron is in a position of digging stuff up for us. <laughs> and tonight, we're going to get another push. I was looking at astrology this morning, and I was like, thank goodness, some of, these, some of these aspects happen in the middle of the night, which then don't influence us as much during the day. However, it makes us restless sleepers because we're churning through things even at night. And enduring. So eight is also about patience and determination and confidence. And so in this time, have confidence. I know it's hard sometimes if, if you don't feel like you have direction or you wonder what's happening in the world, but it's like be confident that the soul knows. Be confident that you know. Be confident that where you are going is exactly where you need to be. And some of the weaknesses... And we talk about light and dark because when all this light comes in, it shines on the dark. It gets into the crevices of places. So some of the weaknesses are materialistic. How many of you might be noticing that you're, you just need to purge and you need to shed stuff? You need to get rid of it. And it's like all of a sudden a, a big light is cast upon something that you no longer need. It's also authoritative. And we're seeing that. We're seeing that in our, our external arenas and social media. We're seeing this. That desire to be a leader, to be heard. And sometimes we do need to be the follower. Sometimes we need to be the leader to our own soul. We need to be the follower to our own soul. And lastly is entitled. It's it's isn't about to ask for permission or forgiveness. It's, it's the need to succeed or these blind rules that we have that are being illuminated. So on the human level, we're learning. We're learning. You see what you want to see. As humans, we see what we want to see. We believe what we want to believe. But we have free will. We have free will to change those things. And what we're seeing right now is, is what those might be, what we see, what we believe might be different, what the soul is driving us forward. And the universe is guiding us there. So this is a time we get pushed. So if you were to manifest, you know, going back to those earlier wishes that many of us have put out, here are some ideas of, of what you might wish for going forward. Wishing for global peace. Wishing for equality for all. Wishing that we see, we honor, we reward our fellow humans. 
and we wish for truth and honesty within ourselves as well as around us. We wish for calmness in every minute, every second, every breath. Every breath we take, we wish for peace. We wish for joy. We wish for happiness and togetherness. And whatever that looks like, right? We wish for togetherness. We wish that we work together to make this planet and our communities and our lives better each and every day for each and every soul. We wish for days filled with abundance and balance. And you can add whatever wishes you want on the end of that. The frequencies of the, of the planet, you know, I'd mentioned the 528 and Earth is at 528 and that's at the heart. But there are higher frequencies that are coming in. And some of you are probably hearing these high pitched whistles and high pitched buzzes. And these are usually coming in at the 963 hertz, which is, I'm talking about Sophigio's um, frequencies now. And that's the frequency that creates room for oneness and unity. It awakens our interactions that we have with others and the interconnectedness between the multiverses. I'm just not talking about the universe. I'm talking about the multiverses. And then 852 Hertz. And this allows us to create harmony with the universe and yourself. And both of these hertz is you can go onto YouTube and, and Google those two and, and find a vibrational frequency that you can listen to that open that up. And if you're looking for solutions, the one that down from that is 741. And that's problem solving and improving our emotional stability. So some powerful frequencies that are coming in now. And I just, I want to share some um, visuals real quick. I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully you can see. So 10 questions that can make a difference for you at this time. Will this choice propel me toward an inspiring future or will it keep me stuck in the past? Will this choice bring me long-term fulfillment or will it bring me short-term gratification? We like those short-term, we like the quick fix on this, but we really need to be thinking about those long-term wishes that we send out to the universe. Am I standing in my power or am I trying to please another? Am I looking for what's right or am I focused on what's wrong? Will this choice add to my life force or will it diminish my energy? And again, this is the infinity at any moment. You have that ability to interrupt and to change your thought patterns. Will I use this situation as a catalyst to grow and evolve or will I use it to beat myself up? This is the judgments. This is the stuff that's coming up that gets to be released. Does this choice empower me or does it dis or is it disempowering? And is this an act of love or is it an act of sabotage? For some of us in past lifetimes, we survived and we thrived based on sabotaging events, but not in this lifetime. This lifetime, we want to be in that place of love. And is this an act of faith or is it an act of fear? And am I choosing for my divinity or am I choosing for my humanity? And just a list, I have a list of things that, that really dim your light. And some of them you might not be aware of. Some of them are very obvious, you know, obvious judging yourself, judging others. 
But what also dims your light is withholding love, either receiving love or withholding love from your family, over exhausting yourself, ignoring your inner voice, watching your language, your words, those shoulds or a have to, lying to yourself. In a, in a time where the truth, Hilarion's ray of truth comes in, our personal lies are getting um, triggered. They're getting found out. We can't hide behind those anymore. And again, you can, I'll give you just a minute. If you have a phone, you want to take a snapshot of this. We can also include them in the, um, in the uh, after recording of the Lake Harriet if you want to keep this. The choices that make your fire roar, and this is the lion's energy, and you want to ignite that flame and, and acknowledge that you're never disconnected from your divine source. You're never disconnected from your soul, but how do you ignite that? How do you throw gas on it? Having fun, dancing, looking for what's right, looking for what's positive, being present. It says being present for your children, but it's also being present for you, being present for anyone. And then receiving others' love. You know, sometimes somebody gives us a compliment or they tell us, you know, we look great or you did a good job and we push it away. So this is a time to receive love. All right. So I'm going to open it up just for a moment and... Um, we do have a music guest today, so I'm just going to cue her up. Pretty Gandhi is going to play us a song and sing. You um, Let us know when you're ready, if you want to do that now. Okay. If you wanted to ask questions, I can wait. Why don't we, um, why don't we go ahead and play the music, and then people can um, post questions in the group chat area during this time, but just sit back and be in this vibration. We talked a lot about the hertz and the vibration. Music and the vibration of the piano are excellent ways to move that energy into us. So go ahead whenever you're ready. Good morning. I'm Creepy, and um, as Lori says, these are very challenging times, and I thought um, a song this morning called Rise Up by Andra Day would help us feel not so alone. <clears throat> You're broken down and tired of living life on a merry-go-round, and you can't find the fire that I see in you, so we can walk it out. Ooh.
Wow. Thank you. I felt that all in my heart. I'm just vibrating. So hopefully everyone felt that too. Thank you so much for sharing your gift with us, us this morning. My pleasure. Yes. All right. So questions today. If there aren't any, aren't any questions, I can keep talking <laughs> about this energy that we're in. You know, we're in, I'll keep an eye on the, the chat space there. Um, so if you want to ask any questions, I do see, see them here. So we're in this summer of, of planetary retrogrades, and we've been feeling it's the time where there is an incredible pressure down upon us to go internal and that doesn't um lighten up until the mid to end of september we have some influences even saturn has been retrograde saturn's not going to go direct until the end of september and saturn shows us how much self-discipline <laughs> and strength that we have and that's one of the things that we're being challenged on now is our, our inner character, our strength. How do we muster through these situations? And so the universe is throwing at us all these events or these, um, I don't know, say opportunities for us to practice or to see where we have those, those strengths, okay? So keeping an eye on Saturn as it goes, as it goes direct, Jupiter has been um, retrograde since May 14th. And Jupiter shows us how we enjoy ourselves. I'll tell you, being in summer in Minnesota, summer anywhere, and we've had any sort of restrictions, you know, Jupiter is it playing in that because it, it wants to show us how we enjoy ourselves. And so some of our frustrations, like we're not being able to enjoy, fully enjoy summer or enjoy being out and about. So it's pushing those buttons. But it's also meant to show us what else can we create in our life that we can enjoy, that we can enjoy, that we can um, realize that, that some of the things that we've had in the past fall away, they won't be coming back. But how do we create those things that are showing up? Okay. Okay. I had a question. Why now? And I'm not sure, Ruben, this is for you. I'm not sure if that's why now in all of this. Um, it is because just in general, um, all of you, you decided to come here to earth to reincarnate at this time 
to be part of this evolutionary process. And we all have roles in this evolutionary process. And some of us are still figuring out what those roles are, what's the, the purpose. And so it is time. And um, this isn't the first time that the world or our peoples or the tribes have gone through deep, deep changes. This is the time though in this lifetime because we're being called to wake up, to be in higher consciousness, to be more aligned with humanity. And when we look at the astrology, when we look at numerology, when we look at just the, the channelings and the teachings that come through, the messages have been that between 2017 and 2027, that 10 year span is, was, was gonna be a huge time of transformation for everybody. We just didn't understand what transformation meant. But Pluto, Pluto's all the big systems. It is the big systems, the big brick and mortar. It's the big uh, systemic issues that need to fall apart. Okay. And yes, the universe gets tired of waiting. <laughs> and, and when I say the universe, it's, it's not just us, it's the multiverses. You know, there, there are other, I don't know if, if people are listening, I don't want to freak anybody out, but there are other beings that are stepping in to help us and watch us and, and they're cheering for us and they're saying what's taking so long, right? So uh, it's just, it's time. It is time. And then a question about when will the virus go away or at least be under control? You know, we're in it. I've been saying all year, there's, I get the message that there's three rounds. There's debate if we're in the second. I feel like we're still in the first round of this. And so it is going to be into 2021 before things start to, I don't want to say get under control. It's just we have a, a different understanding. We have more data or understanding of the data, but it is going to be a while before, before we feel comfortable getting back to some of the old patterns um, or getting back to more of a, a carefree time. And it's going to look different. I'm just telling people it's going to look different. This is one of those opportunities to um, focus on what's right versus what's wrong. It just makes it easier on our energy field. It's more aligned with our heart, with that vibration. And so it's, I'm not saying it's easy, it's tough when you gotta put a mask out on to go out, but to look at the, the positives in that is gonna really help us in that, in that space, okay? Um, other questions? So again, the energy is going to be intense the rest of this year. I do, I do want to leave you with, I'm going to, I'm going to, because it's all about vibration. I'm going to leave you with um, some thoughts. Hopefully you can hear this, this music. And sit back. If you're looking for a different mantra, it's, I embrace, excuse me, I embrace my deepest truth. I am open to the transformation needed for my desires to manifest. I follow my heart and I honor my intuition. I am courageous and move in the direction of my dreams. I open to the soul's deep connections to all. I attract love that nourishes my body, my mind, my spirit, my heart, and my soul. I'm a magnet for abundance. In every breath, I know that when I exhale, I release all that I no longer need. And when I inhale, I receive the flow of love and light from the universe. I know good things flow to me. 
I am fully supported by the universe. And take a deep breath. It is really important, you know, one of the things that I had mentioned earlier about um, making your fire roar is developing those self-care practices, surrounding yourself with the people and the environment that supports you. And so as we go forward today, think about yourself, what you need in your energy field, what you might be contributing to people around you to support them, not in a takeaway energy for you, because again, it's, it's important that you receive, but what's around you to support you in this journey? All right, and with that, I will, I will leave, I will leave you. Namaste, thank you for joining here today. Many blessings to you. Keep in mind the light and the life coming in is always available, but it's just ramped up here between the 8th and the 15th. All right. Have a beautiful day, everyone. Thank you so very much.